So can we get a perfect black and white out of a Canon 8750? <laughs> Well, hello, welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones, and I have a very special guest this week, which is Vince from our sales team. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> he is going to be joining us a lot more, actually, for some videos um, in, in the future weeks and things. So hopefully we can have his insights as well as just me. So yeah, welcome. It's, um, it's nice to have you along, actually, and kind of someone to talk to in these videos as well as Sam. So. Today what we're going to be doing is we are looking at the Canon 8750, which is Canon's kind of cost-effective printer, would you say? I think that's that's a good way. I, I, I'm trying to avoid the word cheap. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's their entry-level A3 printer that offers a good print quality at a good price. Yeah. So it's a six-ink printer. So it has cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and also a pigment black for, but that isn't really used in photo printing, it's used in the document printing. So effectively we've got those five colors, but we've also got the fifth, which is a gray, which is what is really important for this video because we're gonna be trying to hopefully produce a really nice black and white. And we've done lots of test prints as you can see on the table here. And we're gonna be comparing it to the printer I've got to my side here, which is the Pro 300. Now, this is their flagship kind of A3, A3 Plus printer with its 10 inks in there. So, I mean, out of the box, this produces a perfect black and white. So it's really good benchmark to see if we can get the 8750 to actually kind of match the, the print quality. Yeah, I mean, my big question to you, Tim, is did you think it would be possible to get a black and white from an 8750? Because for me, an 8750, <laughs> I've always said to the customer, it produces good colour, but you're not going to get a good black and white from it. Uh, yeah. So let's see what we can do with it. Well, yeah, because I think the problem with it, it this, you should explain, it's got, the 8750's got dye inks in it and the Pro 300 pigment inks. Shouldn't have any bearing kind of on kind of quality wise and things like that, apart from archivability and things like that. But we are going to be doing an, a video on the archivability between these two and the, uh, an age test and a fade test, shall we say. And if prints do fade in the sunlight, we are testing that at the minute. Um, so watch out for that video. Um, but apart from that, I mean, this does have some more inks and a wider color gamut. But we're not really talking about colour, it's about those greys and blacks and if it can produce a neutral, nice black and white. I mean, for me, to answer your question, I think, no. When I've tested this printer before, um, probably last year I think it was, it really did, it kind of fell down a little bit in the black and whites and I was thinking, ah, yeah, great for colour, same as you really, great yeah. for colour, black and white. Not, not gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and you can probably see from some prints on here, we, we've we've done a fair job, to be honest. Um, we're not gonna tell you which prints are which at the minute, you're gonna have to watch um, and find out. But it's done a pretty good job, I think. It's, um, yeah, well, we've got pretty close, I think. So uh, the 8750, as we've touched on already, is a dye ink printer. Dye ink is, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not archival. Uh, it's effectively a watered down dye. Um, it will produce vibrant colours, but the, the life expectancy when printed doesn't offer the same archival qualities as the Pro 300. Uh, whereas the Pro 300 being a pigment ink printer is a ground mineral suspended in liquid, so theoretically it shouldn't fade. So it'd be interesting to see again what the differences are there. And if you're using a, what we call a fine art paper, like our brighter that we've used in this video, and you wanted that fine art certificate, say, to kind of authenticate your work, then you would need to use pigment inks. Um, dye inks are not classified as, like Vince has said, archival. So we can't officially call things fine no. art, no. officially. Um, but they do produce lovely prints. And mm. for color prints, they are lovely and vibrant and punchy, um, and they look great. So. Let's dive into the actual prints and to see how we actually did this. Now, I'm gonna talk through how we did it, but I'm gonna do a separate video on actually 
the walkthrough of the processes I did. So just keep an eye out for that video and I'm going to put a link to it at the end. So um, watch all the way to the end and you'll be able to just click on it and watch actually how I physically did it and how we created these profiles for it because that's the secret. Okay, so let's have a look at the prints and see if we can get a decent print out of the 8750. Okay, so we've moved the printers out of the way so we've got a bit more space um, and we've laid some prints out on the table here. Now, I'm going to put these two to the side for a second because those are the special ones. So, <laughs> we want to just see how the print printed out of the box, or how the printer printed out of the box effectively. So, this one over here on our left, um, hopefully it'll be on your left as well when I do the edit, um, is the Pro 300. And it's produced a pretty good black and white, to be honest. I can't really see, I don't know what you think, Vince, I, I can't really see much, yeah, both, much wrong with it. Uh, yeah, very neutral. Um, I hate to touch on it, but maybe a little bit of gloss differential uh, on, the, on this one. It's obviously the Pro 300 has been printed with pigment ink um, and with a glossy paper, a black ink can sit on the surface very slightly. Uh, the Pro 300 has the Chroma Optimizer, yeah. which effectively puts down a layer of lacquer over the top to prevent um, gloss remember, differential. I can't remember if I had it on overall or auto for this. I think because we're seeing the gloss differential, I might have just clicked the auto. And I suspect if I clicked overall in the driver, we that could kind of it take could that remove away that. Okay. Bit. Yeah. So, um, which you, we're not seeing on this print. No. So this is the eight seven fifty print. Yeah. Um, now this is printed with the option, like the grayscale option. And I should have said actually that the Pro three hundred print here was printed using the um, black and white mode of the printer. Right. Okay. The Canon black and white mode. So does that use a profile or does that override? It overrides the profile, oh, okay. yeah. Interesting. So it's a bit like yeah. the Epson Advanced Black and White mode. They both have, both do the same job. And as okay. you know, if I've done videos before and things, you've probably seen me talk about this and how, for me, it gives a really nice neutral print out of the box. And it's one less thing to think about if your printer has multiple gray inks and such. So it's pretty neutral. Now with the 8750 print here, now we've used Platinum Barita, so it's the same paper stock for both, our yeah. kind of go-to black and white paper, give really rich blacks and things, so really nice detail. It's probably our closest paper to a, a true darkroom yeah. fibre-based paper, so if you want to get that real darkroom look, the Barita seems to be the go-to paper, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's just... Yeah, it just does it out of the tip. It feels 300 great. GSM. 300, yeah. Uh, it's a fairly neutral white point to it. It's nice and smooth. And as Tim says, it gives a real nice deep black. And it just feels lovely in your hand as yeah. well. It's just great. So Now, let's look at the print though, because I think I'm seeing a bit of... It's warmer to start with, I think, when we're comparing. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've got some quite good lights here and things, so we're hopefully we're seeing some really good results. Um, yeah, it's just a bit warmer. There's something else going on. It's not bad. It's not like horribly brown or sepia or anything, but there's just something. Yeah, I've got to say I'm pretty impressed straight away. <laughs> even, even just with grayscale, I was expecting cyan, magenta, green, um, but I'm not really seeing that. As Tim says, there is a slight warmth to it but I'm sure in a minute he's going to say that uh, he can get it a little bit more neutral. <laughs> well, the next step I did was we created a profile for it. So we're just using the printer's own colour management for this print here, yeah. which like you said, I mean, it's not, it's not too bad. On the brighter, it's done a pretty good result. To yeah, be it's impressive. However, there is, it is warmer yeah. compared to this cool kind of neutral. 
yeah. kind of look. We're assuming as our control image here. So the next step was I created a custom profile yeah. um, that we advise everyone to, to do. So by printing one of these charts off, send it in to us, we'll be able to scan this and create you a custom profile. Well, it, that's the biggest part of it. Yeah. So the profiling service we offer is completely free of charge, other than the cost of the postage stamp, yeah. which seems to be Envelope. increasing all the time. <laughs> uh, that's for another day. Um, but we've been doing that now for the last 20 years, I think, the free profiling mm -hmm. service. And it means instead of running off four or five prints to get a good print, it comes out great every time. Yeah, and it, it really does... If you're seeing any color cast or anything in your prints, it really does things back, bring things back in line for you. Yeah. And like, it's just a cost of an envelope and a stamp and a sheet of paper to print this chart on. Now we've got videos on how to do all that and things, so we're not going to get too much into no, that no, today. I'll probably touch on it in the other video actually as well, um, a little bit of how we did it. But then we produced another print, this one here. Put this next to. Make sure I got the right one. Um, put this one next to um, these here. Yeah. So, with the profile, what I'll do is I'll put that under there. So we know oh, which one's which. Yeah, which one's which? Yeah, there we are. So, with the profile, the warmth. I think the warmth's gone a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in the background, I can't really see a massive color cast. It does seem to be getting closer now to. The Pro 300 print, it, yeah. uh, it looks grey rather than a little bit magenta now. This, magenta yeah. in, in the background. That's often a good way of uh, working out if there is a colour cast, is if there's a, a solid area of grey. Um, and it's quite prevalent in, in the right print that it, it's looking neutral now. I'd also say in the middle print on the 8715 grayscale, looking at the lenses, um, it's almost a bit muddy and a bit washed out on the Pro 300 and with the profile now it's it's looking clearer there as well. You can almost see a bit more detail, Yeah. which again a, a profile can help with. That helps with the ink load as well as the colour cast. So it may have backed off in the amount of ink going down into the paper and giving mm. a crisper result, I would say as well. It's, it's a little bit in here. The There's more detail yeah. in the numbers. It really pops a little bit more. Yeah, it's just definitely brought, brought it up a little bit. Yeah. But I wasn't too happy. I wasn't that, that wasn't far enough for me. There's okay. always a but. There's always a but and another stage. Now, when we create a custom profile, normally we say that this is good enough and it is, in most cases, good enough. However, I wanted to take this to the next level. So what I wanted to do um, in the software we have from XWrite, we can optimize a profile, which basically means it will analyze these charts printed on the, the first profiling chart and say, I need some more data in these areas. So it produces another chart for you. We're geeking out now. Yeah. We're going this is, really in depth. This is this is yeah. fine tooth comb <laughs> stuff. But if you want to get the best black and white print yeah. possible, then it's worth going the extra the extra length, isn't it, Tim? Oh, definitely. I think, yeah, we can we, we can offer this service. There is going to be a small charge for it. But if you did, just drop us a message. I'll put the link in the um, description below. Drop us an email is the yeah. best way. And we'll be able to kind of tell you the, how much it will cost and per paper. and Because there is a little bit of time involved. Yeah. Now, we can specify how many patches we, we wanted to do. So I kind of went... The whole hog, I went full full on, and I did an extra 2,000 patches, which is basically two sheets of A4, you can see here, um, and it's filled in a lot of where, where the pro, well, where the software has told us we need a little bit more extra data. So my intrigue here is that obviously we're, we're, we're doing a black and white profile, but I can see lots of color. Mm. What's, what's the purpose of that, Tim? Well, when we're printing black and white, especially the 8750, it's going to be using colour as well. And you'll see, let me just grab that's, this. That's quite an interesting point because obviously if we think of black and white printing, we're, we're thinking, ah, oh, it must only be putting the black down. This isn't the case. No. It's putting no. an underpin of often the sort of a lighter magenta or a light cyan, mm. 
But in the 8750, it, it has to put down the magenta and cyan in order to get a different depth of black, I guess, doesn't it? So yeah, it I guess uses, that's the purpose of it. Yeah, it uses the cyan magenta. Um, as an underpin, and, yeah. effectively, so you're getting a, a good depth of um, black through to white. Yeah, and a little bit of the yellow as well. Yeah, yeah. But you'll see on our first chart here, we've got this little kind of gray scale. Gray scale, yeah, on the right hand side here. It is, and you'll see on this, this second chart here, it's it's basically wanted a lot more information on how much ink it's going to yeah. be using and those different colours in here. This is replicating it but on a grander scale. Yeah. It's a bit more in depth. This will also, it's going to do colour as well. So you don't need a separate black and white profile. Oh, okay. This will do your colour as well. Sure. So the detail we were talking about kind of in the, the glasses and in the jacket and things like that, that will also come through and be helped in your colour pictures as well. Oh, sure. So we've got, this is 924 patches on here. We've added another 2,000 patches of data that the printer, or the profile and the software has requested. Yeah. And um, basically what we're gonna do is we take this first profile, we scan these other charts as well, and the software very cleverly, I don't know how it quite does it, to be honest. I, I, I'm a bit scared to ask x right to be honest. <laughs> and, um, but it basically puts them together for you and creates this super kind of extreme profile. An amalgamation <laughs> of, of yeah. colour and black and white, creating a super black yeah. and white profile. And the profile we're making now, is that just for black and white printing or is, does that work for colour no, also? No, it works for colour as well. Okay, so, so this will improve your colour as well. Good for colour as well. Nice. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's not, I wouldn't say it's necessary. Okay. However, it's there if you need it. And like I said, we can do this, but there, there will be an extra charge for it. But the process is we scan these charts, put them all together, and then we produce this super profile. And hopefully we'll get a little bit closer in our... Quest for black and yes. white. From the so, 8750, I'm excited. <laughs> this was the print here. So I'll tell you what, let's take out these ones. We'll just compare... So we've got the these. Pro 300. Pro 300. Yeah. Then we've got the normal profile here. Yeah. And then we've also got the super optimized profile here as well. Okay, interesting. What are your thoughts, Tim? Well, I think the difference is very slight, but slight but noticeable. I can see it, yeah, straight away. Again, in the block areas, I can see that it, it almost makes the, the middle print look a little bit cyan now. Yeah. Previously, we were saying magenta. Um, it looks yeah nice and clear, almost sharper again. The blacks are looking really black. Uh, especially in the shadow detail, um, yeah. really, really deep. It's picked out a lot more detail, but it's just got a lot more information and tones to play yeah. kind of in that profile. It, I'm, I'm pretty impressed, I, to be honest. I'm gobsmacked, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we now take away the 8750 yeah. and bring the Pro 300 and the 8750 with the Super Profile, <laughs> I'm saying the super profile on the 8750 is more neutral than the Pro 300. Yeah. And when we talk about the price difference in the machines, which we kind of should yeah, mention, yeah. obviously this varies um, week to week, month to month. The time of recording. So there so. is about £420 difference in the two printers. Yeah. I'm impressed. We are. I mean, out of the box, we're, we're talking about the Pro 300 out of the box. We're not. We, we could do the same process for the Pro 300. I, I can feel another video coming. Yeah, yeah. I think we should kind of refine it and yeah. have a look, do a part two to this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because, yeah, that would be interesting also to throw in the Pro 200 as well, which is the... Kind, kind of, of in between, it, isn't it? Yeah, it sits in the middle. It's yeah, the it's dye-based. Just, yeah. It's the Pro 300 with, with dye ink, effectively, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it'd be nice, or maybe we'll get all three together and have a look. And um, also the 8750, it's, it's older technology. It's been mm. around now for well, about a decade, mm. actually. Yeah, it's been, they put um, it in a new box, haven't they? But it's... Yeah, but the, the, the nuts and bolts are, yeah, from, from 10 years ago. Um, so like I say, I've always said the 8750 for colour, great, black and white, not. I've completely changed my sales pitch now. Um, <laughs> and actually, with, with the super profile, you can get black and white prints from the 8750. Yeah. Um, and that nice smooth tone and print, as it's a dye ink, you don't get that differential. No. That you do with a 300. But you do have, we've got the gloss differential in the Pro 300. We're not saying the Pro yeah. 300 
I mean, you will. It is an amazing printer. There are some advantages to the Pro 300, there's, isn't there? Yeah, there's, 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 of, there's, there's pros and cons to both. Yeah. I mean, the Pro 300 has got a much greater colour gamut, yeah. isn't it? So, bigger ink set. Bigger ink set, it's got 10 inks instead of the six. Uh, so. 10 inks, it's, it's a nicer build quality. Yeah, it's newer definitely. technology. And you've got more control using the plugin as well, haven't you? Yes, the Pro 300. you've got the um, professional print and layout software where you yeah. haven't on the yeah. 8750. Yeah. The, I think the feed's better on the 300. Yeah. But for those uh, on a budget, yeah. um, those looking to get into printing, I wouldn't ever look at an A4 printer. You've got to go straight onto an A3. It gives you flexibility. You can print six by four, five, seven, etc. But you can now also print up to A3 plus, and most importantly, you can get a black and white print, which yeah. uh, I never thought would be possible. No, it's 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 fantastic. But if we get our calibration page as well, we can really geek out here a little bit. <laughs> I've got to remember which way around that. So that's the Pro 300. Okay. We're keeping them that way around. Yeah. Um, and we've got our chicken and eggs uh, yeah. picture, as we call it. And we've got the colours in here and everything. I mean... They this. look very close, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, colour-wise, they're pretty they're pretty similar, to be honest. Yeah, I would say there are differences <laughs> in the colour. I mean, checking down here, that almost looks a little lighter. Uh, maybe yeah. a little more vibrant, actually, which is the nature of a dye ink. Generally, with dye ink, uh, you will get more vibrant results um, straight off the bat. Yeah. Um, but I would say perhaps it's slightly more neutral in the grey scale on the, uh, on the mm. Pro 300 there. The yellow is slightly different. Yeah, I mean, it's also worth saying uh, we, we make a, when we make the profile for you, um, when we send the profile back, we do supply the calibration page with the profile so you can test it out. And if you're not 100% sure what you're seeing, you might be colorblind or uh, for whatever reason, um, you can send the calibration page back to us for analysing, and we will be able to tell you straight away if there's an issue with the colour cast, and if there needs to be any refinements yeah. with the super profile, as yeah. it's now been dubbed. Yeah, fantastic. But yeah, it's a bit conclusive test, really, I think. So at the start, we said, can you get a nice neutral black and white print out of an 8750 from Canon? And the answer is yes, yeah. to be honest. With some good profiling from us, obviously it's a free service. All you have to buy is a box of paper and a stamp and an envelope. and Completely free service to get some really nice that first profile anyway. Yeah. To get you some really good black and whites as we saw. If you did want to take that step further, then give us a shout and we'll be able to kind of have a chat about that and tell you what what we need to do. And if you're struggling and not sure how to follow the instructions, as clear as we make them, we do offer the service of the uh, yes. remote login, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we just log in through Zoom and you just sit back with your cup of tea or coffee or something stronger and watch us do it, basically. Put the paper in and print them off for you. So that's another service we can offer for you. Yeah, I mean, we're happy to hold your hand through the whole process from start to finish. Uh, the most important bit is that you're getting well, you're getting good prints. If you're, uh, if you're a happy printer, yeah. You're printing more often, which suits us as well. So on that note, I, th I think we're finished. I think we've we've answered our question, if we can get a decent black and white. I mean, it's proved us all wrong, I suppose. It's a kind of we Well, yeah, like I say, at, at the start I said, no, it's not possible. Yeah. And um, I've been proven wrong. Uh, Tim, Tim has geeked out. He's, uh, he's made the, <laughs> an amazing profile. Goes beyond my knowledge. I don't uh, think we're that. saying jump out and go out. Dump your Pro 300 and buy an 8750. No, not at all. I think I think the the 8750 is a great introduction. Yeah. Printer into printing. It's cost effective. Um, it's accessible, and it it prints well. Um, and not not just on the lightweight papers. You've you've had success on on the art papers yeah. as well. Haven't yeah. You? So. It, it's a nice little printer. I've been quite impressed with it. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. So much so that Tim now prints with the 8750 at home, <laughs> don't you? I do, yeah, because it's a it, it, little different process, but yes, for my um, positives and negatives for alternate process and things, it's dye inks are perfect for that. I so, can fill another video coming there as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, how we do it. Um, but yeah, fantastic. So, hope you've enjoyed that. And it's been really nice to have Vince along with me. And it's a <laughs> pleasure to be part of the video, actually. Yeah. I'm really enjoying myself Good. and yeah, looking forward to... Uh, joining on future videos. Yeah, because I think he's going to be a, um, a regular feature now. So that'd be fantastic. Sounds good to me. So if you wanted to find out a little bit more actually how I produce these charts and how I produce these profiles for it, please just click on the video up here and that will take you through my whole process and take you through the software and actually how, how I went through and made these profiles. 
So on that note though, we're gonna finish. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel. And also don't forget to sign up to our newsletter for exclusive offers on paper and all the lovely products we sell here at Photospeed. And also don't forget to download the Photospeed Art of Printing, the free ebook covering everything from turning on the printer to profiles, to framing, to mounting, bookmaking, everything in between. Got loads of um, top tips from all our ambassadors and things in there and it's absolutely free. So give that a download. Okay, and so until next week, bye-bye. See you next time.